they call him Jesus. They call him Emmanuel. They call him the Savior, Savior, King of the world. They call him Jesus. Hallelujah. They call him Emmanuel. Oh, they call him the Savior, King of the world. Anakoya Jesus. And now for your man, now for you, for you, for now for your names of Uta, Ezu, and Elaine. They call him Jesus, who they call him a man, who they call him the Savior, King of the world. You, they call him Jesus. Oh, they call him Emmanuel. Oh, they call him the Savior, King of the world. Oh, they call him Jesus. Oh, they call him Emmanuel. Oh, they call him the Savior. King of the world. Mary of Chicago, sing with me. Now for ya, Jesus. Ooh, now for ye, Manuel. Ooh, now for ye, Nenza, Buta, Ezu, Anile. Ooh, now for ya, Jesus. Ooh, now for ye, Manuel. Uyu hana po yu nyenza puta izu anile. U na po ya jiza. U hana po ya imamla. U hana po yu nyenza puta king of the world. Let's do lovely dance. Come on. Let's do Geneva's dance. Let's do Little Mama dance. Whoa! Come on! Pam 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 let's do merry dance la 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 let's jump come on la 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 come on let's go da la 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's the song that Mamesi taught me when I was a very young boy. My mother, Mamesi, she taught me that. Okay. And I hope, I hope, Natalie, that you are going to teach your son that, yeah, that song. I hope you do. Victoria, make sure that you put you put a chain around your boy and teach him that song also. And let him sing and dance and shake it like I do. Woo! Shake it like an elephant. Shake it like an elephant. Drop it like a bomb. Smell like an angel. Ride it like a rodeo. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. That's good. All right. Angel, I hope you are dancing with me this morning. Okay. Let's ask the reader to read for us the gospel for this morning. Matthew 5 and 20. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes, and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> the Lord Almighty.
pledge to us the reading from his holy gospel, the gospel of our King. And unto his name be the praise and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And amen. It's about time that uh, we bring the scriptures near. Victoria, I still keep the, I still keep this picture that you sent to me. I'm not allowing them to see it. It's a religious picture that she sent it to me during Christmas. Very important, very very important to celebrate. Uh, Christmas. I think you guys can see it. It's a, it's a picture of Mary holding the baby Jesus. Okay. I'm not asking you to go and get it. I'm just keeping here to honor Victoria for her love and her caring. Little things like that, I keep them. All right. All right. We've moved the Bible back here because certain things uh, at the last broadcast, certain things are going to leave the altar and the altar going to be redecorated. All right. Accept your righteousness, your justice. Accept the way you do good things. See, even devils knows how to do charity. So Jesus is saying, you're gonna go more than that. Except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. The kingdom of heaven does not belong to you. You went up here. I want to repeat this again and again. The kingdom of God and the planet of God, that is heaven, does not belong to those who are hypocritical about the works, the life, and the word of God. How did the Pharisees and scribes live their life? They saw religion as a means of making money. They saw religion as a means of power. They saw religion as politics as a means of social control. That's how they saw it. They saw the relationship between humans and divinity as for personal greediness and arrogancy and brutality. They even kill people for God, whereby God never asked them to do it. They practice it. That's why a lot of the prophets were killed by their own people. Because they ventured to tell the truth. The Pharisees and scribes saw the bad things happening in society. They didn't say anything about it. The only thing they talked about where what touches their money, their power, their authority, and their material resources. Jesus said they could have, he did not ask them not to pursue money, or not to pursue riches, or personal powers, but they should have done more 
what was lacking was devotion to God that comes from the Spirit. That was what was lacking. They were devoted in their practice and reference of the law and of what is written. But there was no devotion and reference to God as a being, as a person. That was what was lacking. See, let me tell you. If you did not know it, the world greatest religious fellow is Lucifer. Lucifer is king of religion, if you didn't know it. He's also king of philosophy. Yeah, you can't beat him in that. He also is king of the law. And yet, if you ask him, he will tell you that he belongs to God, the maker of all things. And he's right. And all his people will tell you the same thing. And that's why there are certain meetings that God will call that he and his people will call. Why? Because they still see themselves as sons of God. But are they completely sons of God in the completeness of the word in true devotion to God? No. Instead, they set up a competition with God which is the most stupid thing to do. This is not a good thing. I want you to be aware of this. People could have a form of devotion and business that comes from that devotion, but absolutely have nothing to do with the God, the Father of Jesus. Because this is what it is. Anybody, including Lucifer and his fallen angel and demons and leaders of this earth, they can tell you that they are sons of God and that they, they belong to God. Every witch doctor pours libation to the Supreme God before they pour it to the ancestors and to the demons. And to fallen angels. Why do they do this? They are simply following the tradition of their leader. Whereby they are claiming very strongly that they are sons and daughters of God. Mouth, empty spirit, unfaithful mind liars and killers and that's exactly what it is okay thank you i want you to be aware of this fact that you cannot deceive god with hypocrisy i've come across many scammers in my lifetime many scammers People who look at you in the face and lie to you. And Washington is full of it right now. It's half past 11 at night. Thank you. I want you to be aware of what Paul wrote for people who are holding to a form of religion. The New Testament speaks very strongly of that. People who hold to a form of religion and denying its power. There are. People who proclaim that they belong to God. But when you introduce one thing into that belief of God, which is Jesus, they all back off. The only thing that determines whether you truly, you are a son or a real daughter of God, is how you are devoted and how you do business with, true, and in Jesus. Doesn't matter what kind of business you are doing on it.
The reason is because demons can talk about that God made them. But God did not make them demons. Fallen angels can talk about that they belong to God. But God did not make them fallen angels. But when once you introduce Jesus, the Son of the Living God, into the occult, the esoteric, and to the astral movements, they all back off. Because Jesus, in the Father and the Father in Jesus, is the center of the whole thing. When you begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, all magic walks away. Because there is a difference between Leviathan, Leviathan, the serpent, and the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the Father and the King. Jesus is a big difference. When once you introduce Jesus and the Holy Ghost into the system, every other thing that says that they know God will all back off. They will all fall off. Introduce his name and his blood into the system and every other thing runs away. They don't want it anymore. And that's why Jesus said, unless your righteousness is greater than the one of the scribes and Pharisees, you, you cannot have the reward of heaven both on earth and in heaven itself. I want you to be aware of this. Real devotion is spirit to spirit. Real devotion is without greed and arrogance. Real power is meek, understanding, and listens. Any power that is authoritarian and greedy and dirty doesn't stand a chance in our world anymore. I want to say this without no apology to anybody. Since the introduction of the Obama's world into the 21st century, our world is not going to be the same again. It doesn't matter who comes in power or goes out of power because something has shifted. Not because of Obama, but something has shifted from the year 2000. Something has shifted. And very soon we will start to see the shift. I ask you, brothers and sisters, to join me in following the man that was born in Bethlehem, that man of Galilee, that walked the seashore of Galilee, that man that carried his cross through Jerusalem. I want you to join me to follow that man. He is the God that we worship. Join me. He has sent me on a mission to America, to Europe, to the Middle East, to the Caribbean, to the Oceania, the South Pacific, to Africa, to North America, the Americas, the Hispanic countries, to Asia. How much are you willing to give? So that the man of Galilee can build a strong culture, a 21st century Christianity in our time. Will you join me to do that? That's how your righteousness will be greater than the one of the Sadducees and Pharisees.
join me. Send your love offering to P.O. Box 2491, Wichita, Kansas State, 67201 USA. Do not close your heart to Jesus asking you to help him. If you help me to do God's work of bringing people to Jesus and of raising new leaders for Jesus so that he can do the big shift movement that he's about to do, then heaven is yours and earth is yours as well. Let us pray. I ask God to reward you for your generosity to me and to my office and mission in America. I ask God to change your life. I ask God to change you. I ask God to change your world view and turn it into a Jesus' view of things. I ask God to change your children, your family members. I ask that out of the conflict in your family, that life, peace, and order will come. I ask God to stop you from suffering. And I ask him to make you to prosper through whatever way he find that is the easiest and the best for you. I ask that a new eye grows behind your eyes. What I mean by that is, I ask that the Spirit of God sees through your eyes so that you can know and see things the way they are. God Almighty bless you. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus. And remember that the blessing of the Lord make it rich. And he doesn't add any sorrow to it. That's the blessing that I'm invoking on you. And I release on you. Both now. And forever. Amen. This is Idikai Mary saying to you, I'll see you tomorrow during Wake Up and Pray. Bye-bye.